I'm paying special attention here to the corners of the lips. Uh, I find that at the corners, because of the buccinator muscle, which hangs over that corner lip, you actually get an overhang where the upper lip essentially overhangs the lower lip. And getting that to tuck in properly can really kind of be a nuisance as you're working around. So what I recommend doing here, again, work with the lower lip first, and then come when you extrude out the lip edge for the upper lip, make sure you're coming back in above that, again, which you'll see me do in just a second. Uh, add a couple more edge loops in here just to get that little dent in under the lip. Now we'll continue our way along, softening my normals again just to make sure I've got everything working. So insert another edge loop just so I can extrude down to meet the upper lip here. And I'm putting it just in the position between the nostrils so I can extrude down through the filtrum, which is the little gap right above the lip. There we go, over the filtrum into the upper lip section and creating my edges so that they match up with both of my image planes. I'm, I'm keeping it between the walls of the filtrum right now just so I can see exactly where that feature is. And as I extrude and move around, uh, I'm trying to pay attention to the fact that eventually the upper lip should really feel sharper than the lower lip. Uh, the lower lip is a much rounder form and obviously we don't have the edge loop construction here for that yet. But uh, I'm trying to pay attention to that structure uh, so that I can come back in and make sure I have that creasing defined later. So here's what I meant by the corner of the lips. We, we really want to make sure that that upper edge uh, hangs over the lower edge and right now it's just sort of uniformly connecting uh, which is why again we're going to edit these points here just to get a little bit of that transformation happening. But taking these points, tucking them back in, pulling this side over you get that much more naturalistic creasing effect that we're really going to be looking for. Again, using the append polygon tool here, I'm going to start to come in and fill up some of these gaps, uh, trying to make sure that uh, my edges match up. And if I need to move some vertices to get them in the way first, I'll, I'll do that. Um, so I append across, you'll notice I'm leaving gaps uh, between some of these. And I find it's easier to work this way so that I can then append across rather than having to merge to mix up these sections. So by leaving a gap, let's say, between the filtrum and the appended faces along the top, uh, and you'll see here along the bottom, by leaving that little one face narrow gap, I can then get my insert edge loop tool, match up all of these edges that I had through the uh, middle section, and uh, I'll be able to append across that very, very quickly and very easily in just a minute. So just here massaging my vertices again, as I said, I often kind of go back and forth in my work process, making sure that um, all of my points do kind of match up. Um, here's an insert edge loop and another one just so I've got that continuous structure to make quads and now it's going to be very easy for me to just append straight through this and fill up those gaps. But with any sort of vertices that you put in, any extra geometry that you add during this process, it's a really good idea to make sure that you get your points into place as soon as possible or else it gets out of hand and you might not have the form correct and you'll have to kind of come back and find that. So really looking at all of your views as you do this and making sure you got things in place, very, very valuable. Soften my normals real quick and you can see my mouth structure starting to take place.
Again, coming into my side view, just to make sure that uh, these points match up. Uh, trying to get this as close as I can into place before I add anything else, and that is the biggest sort of trick of this process, is not getting ahead of yourself, not wanting to jump on to the next structure, uh, and really making sure what you have works before you move on. You can see the corner of my mouth is bucking out a little bit, so that's why we push this back and rounding out the lower lips a little bit. Now I can select all the edges here on the inside of the mouth and with the extrude tool under edit mesh extrude I can extrude this back to create a little bit of depth for the inside of the mouth and if I switch my camera so them inside uh, I'll just reselect these and widen them out and continue extruding just again to create like a little bit of a pocket for the inside of the mouth. Now a really cool trick with Maya 2009 and after uh, is that double clicking on an edge uh, will actually select the whole edge loop and I use that to very fastly select just this interior area. Um, in this case though, if I had just double clicked on that, it would have selected the border edge of my lips as well. And here you see me, I'm inserting another edge loop to create some roundness on the lips. Um, but what you can do is, uh, if you click on a edge on, let's say, the far side of the edge loop that I want, and click on another edge holding down shift on the opposite far side, double clicking on any of the edges between those two selected edges will select an edge loop only uh, between that border and uh, that's actually what I had used here for the inside of the mouth instead of just clicking on the whole thing uh, doing a double click I was selecting the borders and then um, using a double click to select between them so you see I'm, I'm trying to create a denser structure on the upper lip and a little bit of a rounder structure on the lower lip. And I've done this by creating these vertices here uh, at slightly different distances apart. The upper lip has vertices that are a little bit closer together where it turns the corner and goes down into the lips. And the lower lip has vertices that are a little bit further apart. And that's what allows me to create the more angular versus more rounded form. Really pushing back in here to define the filtrum. And uh, these lips are moving. Make sure you check from your low angles looking up and from your sort of uh, up angles looking down. It can really give you a sense of the face that you're not going to get from your other image plane views. And you know, I am using the image planes primarily for this, but it very much helps to use your perspective view and just use your general idea of artistic knowledge and human anatomy to continue furthering the quality of your piece. Now, I made a NURBS sphere, and I'm scaling this up, and I'm going to position it just behind the eye and rotate it forward a little bit so that I can see that the center vertex kind of acts like a pupil. Uh, I'm going to position this right where my eyeball is in the orthographic view, and this is going to help me build my geometry, my polygon geometry, around this eyeball. And I'll be able to kind of figure out where everything needs to go in 3D space by having this eyeball in place. 